My name is Joseph Buckley, president of John Reed and Associates. And in this brief video presentation, I would like to discuss the question, is it permissible for an investigator to lie about evidence? Over 50 years ago, in the case of Frazier versus Cobb, the United States Supreme Court said it is acceptable for an investigator to misrepresent evidence to a subject. In this particular case, Frazier versus Cobb, the police had falsely told Frazier that his accomplice had confessed. When considering whether or not this was a permissible tactic, the Supreme Court said you must consider the totality of circumstances. And if, in an otherwise voluntary confession, the only thing that occurred was the misrepresentation of evidence, then by itself that is not likely to make a confession inadmissible or involuntary. The key phrase in that assessment is this otherwise voluntary confession. So I think what the Supreme Court is saying is that if the subject's rights were honored, if there were no threats of physical harm or inevitable consequences, if there was no promise of leniency, if in fact the interrogation was conducted in accordance with the guidelines established by the courts, then lying about evidence by itself is not likely to make an innocent person confess. It is not likely to jeopardize the admissibility of the confession. This principle has been affirmed hundreds and hundreds of times over the last several decades by a number of courts and research. For example, when one investigator looked at the first 100 DNA exoneration cases, many of which were the result of investigators lying to the subject about evidence, the investigator found the following, and I'll quote, this study failed to find a single false confession of a cognitively normal individual that did not include the use of coercive tactics by the interrogator, such as the use of physical force, denial of food, sleep, or bathroom, explicit threats of punishment, explicit promises of leniency, and extremely lengthy interrogations. Court decisions have consistently upheld the investigator's ability to misrepresent evidence about a number of different elements, including misrepresenting the fact that an accomplice had confessed, or that there was an eyewitness identification, or that the subject's fingerprints were found at the scene, or that there was a DNA match. However, in our book, Criminal Interrogation and Confessions, we caution that misrepresenting evidence should not occur when interrogating a juvenile with low social maturity or an individual with significant mental or psychological impairments because those persons may be too susceptible to suggestion. For a more detailed discussion of this entire issue, we have published on our What's New page an article entitled, Should Investigators Be Allowed to Lie About Evidence to a Subject During Interrogation? And of course, we extensively discuss the issue in our book, Criminal Interrogation and Confessions. Thank you very much for taking a few minutes to view this video presentation.